Let the beat go. Let the beat go on. Let the bass drum kick. This is the sound of a song that I used to play. I used to tell people that it was what I'd done for a living as I was a singer. Saying I don't do so much these days. Let the bass kick. Do you like the sound of the drums? Because I used to say this was my band. It's not something I do much anymore. And it's the sound of the bass and the guitars. And melody. Harmony. And that's the name of my daughter and her friend. And you're listening to Dangerfield Sunday Prescription. The Ativan edition. And this week, of course, I want to talk to you about... Yeah. Lena Medina. Lena Medina. Medina. Listen to this. Lena Medina is from Peru. And she gave birth when she was five years old. Five years old. Someone had sex with her when she was four years and three months old. (laughs) Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? Imagine. Don't give him birth at five. You're barely big enough to have your own body. (laughs) (laughs) Ah. Imagine what she done. No, oh, scared, terrifying. Does beg the question though, isn't it weird? I was doing a cum. I think I started doing a proper cum when I was about thirteen. And and I I think girls start ovulating. Oh gosh, is it called ovulating? I don't know. I suddenly got a bit scared. I got the wrong word. <laughs> over over ovating. <laughs> o ovalizing. You see, we missed out on uh, sex education at my school. We were too busy making wooden things. Yeah. Lena Menina, anyway. Respect to her. She's 82 now. Still lives in Peru. Yeah. Got a couple of kids of her own. Probably waited till she was an adult, though. Well, obviously she's got a couple of kids of her own. Fucking hell, man. I am tired. It's well late. I've been so busy. Anyway, back to me doing a proper cum. When I was about 12, it's a weird story, obviously. No one's got a normal first cum story because it's not normal to come when it's the first time. Imagine someone did, though. That's a measure. From now on, when you meet someone new, to save yourself a lot of heartache and pain and usually money, find out if they're all right early by doing the Dangerfield first cum test. So uh, I'll take you through the situation. So you're sort of standing there in some swanky bar and your mate comes up your mate John all right John hello Chris all right you all right John yeah you all right Chris yeah good good you look well oh nice one you all right yeah I'm good John so that's going all right because John and Chris are having a great time well that's you and your mate and then he goes this is my mate Ben and you go all right Ben he goes hello Chris you all right all right Ben now you might befriend him it, all sorts of things might happen but most people turn out to be wankers and it's sort of you know you end up saying oh you know your mate Ben no 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 don't bring him around <laughs> I don't want to see him again so you, what you need to say in such circumstances is alright Ben yeah Ben when was the first time you did a cum when was the first time you did a cum and he's going to look at you and he's, and he's going to look at John and John's going to sort of nod because John knows that you ask things like that because you're going to be doing it a lot. Uh, the first time it happens, I don't know, you wait till he's drunk or something. And then back at Ben, eyes on eyes. When was the first time that you did a cum? Ben, when did you do a cum for the first time? And, and, and if, he's got, if his story is of no interest and, and odd, that's it. Don't just cut him out. Pretend he doesn't exist. Look above him. Look over him. Every time he speaks, go, huh, did someone fart? Did someone do a fart in here? Something like that. Or get a staple gun and fix his lips together. I had a mate who'd done that. Oh, this is an awful story. He he was he was in awful trouble and he went round their house because he knew they had some of the th- bananas, of course. And uh, he let himself in and they wouldn't give it to him. And he sewed his lips together. Hey, hey. Imagine actually doing it. I've got this image of someone doing it like they do in the films, and they sort of, you know, when you sort of put the needle through and you sort of, sort of up towards your right hand side. So, sew his lips together. 
But so I you remember when you have a wank when you're a kid and you don't do a cum but you just sort of go nah, yeah <laughs> remember that I can't remember a time I wasn't doing it isn't that weird when you're a baby your arms can't sort of reach a willy but as soon as they can that's it it's over that I reckon that's probably the most important time in the evolution of the male um, not evolution you know what I mean the evolution of your own life's journey perhaps uh, Freud talks about the anal uh, genital and oral and the the, 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 the the child sort of fixates on those things for shitting, uh, breeding later in life, pissing and eating and they have to carry some sort of pleasure you know when you have a plop and you sort of go oh, oh lovely and it feels great oh it's meant to and it always did that's why, you, that's why you do it otherwise a baby will just sort of fill up and become a huge ball of shit <laughs> and that would society would be terrible if we all walked around carrying every single bit of shit that we'd ever should have done. Can you imagine how things would have been different if that hole hadn't evolved? Or uh, a religion came along and said, no, the anus is wrong. Sew it up like the lad did with your friend's mouth that time. And, and they sort of sewed it or seared it together. Like, got a pair of, like, you know how you do hot knives? <laughs> you know when you're 14 and you want to rip your lungs out by burning shit cheap hash and going... <laughs> Imagine that, they just sort of put a hot knife on your either side of your little shrink tie. And then they sort of anointed you. You there, danger filled, will never do a shit ever. You are clean of this foul disgust. But of course, your belly just sort of gets bigger and bigger. But people would be pri- uh, uh What's the word? It would be you'd be prized if you had a big shit belly. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like there'd be groups of blokes watching women walking along, pushing their shit belly along in like a wheelbarrow. Oh, look at the shit on that! That is absolutely full of shit. And there'd be people, of course, who couldn't eat so much, or they were they were sick a lot, and so they'd be sort of like the the outcast <laughs> of that particular classification of beauty will be going ah oh, no man I wouldn't go near have you seen her she's got no shit whatsoever nothing no man and then there'll be uh, it'll be the equivalent of plastic surgery where instead of having false broobs I mean we all need a false broob I keep mine in the fridge <laughs> this time of year I don't bother I just it's just out and about but um instead of false boobs or false bum lips eyes whatever you'd have false shit belly uh, yeah no nah. oh look at that and people go no nah, you can tell when it's false so it feels different or when they lay on their back you know they the shit just sticks upright rather than flopping all around <laughs> so god knows what i was talking about i don't think it matters though it hasn't mattered for the previous uh 24 um podcasts Something about me wanking. That's mo- most comedy or most conversations I ever have. Right, here we were. That ignoring your mate because he hasn't got... Fir- hey, our first coming. I'm there. Easy. But I remember doing it. First of all, I'm just holding my cock because I'm a little baby. As soon as I can grab hold of it, that's what I was saying, really. I think that's a real important moment in the development of humans. They say that you're autoerotic before that, and that doesn't mean you're just like, oh, yeah, <laughs> all the time. Uh, far from it. When you're born, you're like, ah! which is almost the opposite, yet very similar to the orgasmic sensation. But you're not happy, are you? You're all you my mum says to me, "You, were, all your veins were up, you had yellow eyes and you were covered in lard. Love saying it. Always will say it at any opportunity. Oh, what are you doing tonight, mum? You were covered in lard when you were born. All your veins were up. You had yellow eyes. She loves it. And of course, it only, only requires me to get a little bit bitter of my past and go, well, you fucking spat me out. Didn't ask for it, did I? Nice one. Thanks for the life you've given me. You spat me out. Ugh, that, all that shit and lard was yawn. I didn't mean to say shit there. Sorry, Mum, about the plop. I've done a plop in the bath, so I do need to... Not recently. I do need to apologise to my mum, actually. Sorry, Mum, about the poo in the bath. Um, I was only about seven. Two years older than old Lena Medina when she gave birth, but I was still very much a child. And I used to have to share the bath with my brother, and we'd be in it. And uh, I don't actually remember releasing the poo, but I did claim it as if I just knew. I mean, looking back, it might not have been mine, actually. It might have been my brother's, but I, I sort of knew it was, so, you know, I, there was no arguments. So, anyway, 
it sort of floated away. But there you go. It, it was near me. It surfaced close to me. And there, that's a, a very important choice of words. That is uh, surfaced. And it's part of the story. And then it sort of made its way across to my brother, like only with the movement of the water. It didn't have like little poo arms. This is a poo heavy fucking podcast, isn't it? Dangerfield Sunday Plop Shop. It moved over to my brother and he sort of cupped it, right? He put his hand under it delicately. He looked all confused. I can remember he was sort of frowning. I felt a bit sorry for him, which is weird for your older brother. I was older. I'm drinking tea, by the way. I'm not now and again just going... <laughs> trying to suck dribble back in my mouth. I'm actually just slurping down tea. And I've come in and I forgot to put the heaters on, so it's cold in here, so I'm a bit shivery. And I had a couple of headache tablets and they turned out to be Ativan. Not even joking. Weird, isn't it? I don't need to joke. Why would I Why would I pretend otherwise? Oh, I accidentally took some Ativan. But I actually did. It's weird, isn't it? Hang on. Going back, so touching the penis in being important, significant, because you're unhappy before that. You're screaming and you're crying and people have to feed you and they keep waking you up, they keep putting you to sleep and there's all this noise and you can't work it out what it is. And every time someone comes to visit the house, they just shove you in their hands and like, get all that nicotine off me, you stink of piss, all that stuff. And then suddenly one day your hand grabs hold of your little penis and you're like, oh, fucking wicked. <laughs> Can you imagine? All you've gone through is loads of shit you don't want to do. You had nine months in that womb, wicked food straight into your water, straight into your plot, and we fuck no, don't even know how that works by that point. But it's all gone. No work, no cleaning, no bills, no taxes, no telephone calls, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, none of that sort of stuff. Um, just nothing, no paranoia, no fear, no mental illness, no drug addiction, no violence, no hatred, just bliss. They yank you out of there, hell, instant hell, it's horrible. Some old nurse slapping your bum, wake up, make a noise you little bastard. And you sort of open your bleary eyes and you can see this thing that's going, oh my god, in front of you. But its legs are open and there's blood and shit all over the bed and they're putting you nearer and nearer. You're thinking, hang on, I didn't, I, I didn't sign up for this. And then you've got, what, two years of that and they're shoving you here, shoving you there, putting you on their tit. Oh, that's not so bad though. Mm -hmm. Oh, I quite like this. Mm -hmm. Not too good though because there's other weird things about it and I don't know and then suddenly you grab your penis women you get your hand downstairs you know what although I know I'm talking about babies doing it, it's all innocent I will say because it's interesting I feel a hell of a lot um, more relaxed talking about a boy doing it the woman is we a woman <laughs> a woman you know like a woman baby but I, I don't feel very relaxed saying about a woman touching her clitoris because I don't know much about that. But I surely they do it when they're children too. And that moment must be incredible. You must just be like, how? And you can sort of, then you start getting into repetition, you know, emotion. When you touch it, you pull it, oh, wow. But then you realise if you sort of move it and bit and back, oh, Jesus. And I can remember doing that as far back as I can remember. And I've never really stopped. <laughs> just incredible. And I think there's like, did you hear that one? I was going to break into a story that started with, but I couldn't be asked, so I just went, and then I tried to cover it up, and I've said it a few too many times now, but just giving it all that, and then you wouldn't come, you'd just sort of go, amazing times I, I was doing it every single moment i could whenever i could do it i would just go for it amazing and all these i remember all my friends when i sort of got to sort of early adolescence like yeah if you if you make a hole in a cucumber in a cucumber make a hole in a melon you can fuck it it's wicked and i was sort of at home trying to do that and it was rubbish and then of course i climbed up a rope wow isn't that something else, man? How old is that? When does that start happening? About 10, 11? I remember at school, those things, they called it the Southampton at my school. It was like a big wooden contraption, death trap, really. Parquet wooden floor, no mats or anything. If you fell off, <coughs> dead, no problem. Chop you up, put you in the school dinner. But I've climbed up those ropes. They're those big shipping ropes. They've got to be about two and a half inches across. And I climb up, and the exertion of my body... And having to push my pelvis into it. And then one day, just touched it and went... <laughs> wow, man. 
like it's like you're coming up on about 20 e's your stomach's just and your whole bollock and balls cock and perennium anal in the whole sort of genital anal selection is just glowing like ah, and your whole body and i remember and this was every time it happened because it would happen in the park when i climbed up the metal bit there all the swings up and that i remember i had this i started to develop a, a bit of shame around it because i wasn't I wasn't ashamed that I was feeling pleasure, which I knew was sexual. You know, it was right down in my balls, bum, uh, penis. It was all down there. It was all going, you know, amazing. Sort of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I had this bit of shame because I, I knew there were like my mates downstairs. like <laughs> Not downstairs, like at the bottom of the rope. And it wasn't that I thought they'd judge me. I wasn't going to tell them, you know, at that age. I wasn't going to get down and go, huh, do you feel it in your willy, like, really lovely, huh? Not a chance. But I just thought it was a bit weird that I was in that mind space and they were in the old mind space, you know what I mean? The normal, they're not sort of here. And that was a bit weird. I sort of, it made me feel like I was in, in my own world. That, that's, that's it. Everything, nothing else mattered except for just that f sensation of that rope on my nuts. <laughs> Fucking hell. But I realised I was being pulled away from other people. Isn't that weird? And, and, and no surprise that for later on in life, that, that idea of being away from everyone, you know, emotionally or mentally or whatever, appealed to me. What a sensation, though. What a time. Anyway, the first time I did a comer. So for years I'm just going, I I. My mate told me the other day, because we were talking about that rope thing, and he said he's done a comer doing it. Wow, imagine actually on the rope doing a comer. I haven't done it. Just to, uh, He said he's done it recently as well, and he's 40. I'm 43. He said he's done it recently. Stopped working for me. I remember I got to about 15, and it was like, oh, man, this fucking bird has flown. No, no. Tried it. Tried it a few, a few years after that, but no, 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 no. But he's still done it, and he's done a comer weird anyway so i'm just doing the wanking and going ah oh but nothing and i had this little black and white telly it was made by the brand winthronics <laughs> it was only about 10 inches by 10 it looked like what square it was like a rectangle fuck no it was a tiny little thing winthronics had a dial you know do you remember that it just make a hell of a noise and you got all that uh, what's it they reckon it's microwaves from the Big Bang or something like that all that those mad black and white things and then shh, and then a few lines would appear and then suddenly it would and it would come round to this sort of black and white image of whatever and I was watching the snooker and I was just in bed you know, I wasn't sort of watching it enjoying it but it was the only channel I could tune in and I got the telly off my nan at the time it was still a bit of a you know having a fucking black and white 10 inch TV in your room was fucking not that was that was having it off so I've got it on and uh, I've had a wank and I've gone, ay, ay, ay. And, you know, that's it, as usual. Nothing happened apart from that. Lovely, though. Almost better. No mess to clean up. Not very good for making porn, but I wasn't making porn when I was that young. <laughs> well, I haven't, haven't made any either lately. Anyway, so I've done that as normal. And then I've sort of rolled over just to sort of watch the snooker. I remember Cliff Thorburn was playing. I remember looking at him and thinking he had a big moustache. Oh, getting a bit Freud, isn't it? What's that? Little hands. He's terrified of the, the big black strap on the horse that comes around his town. Freud reckons it's because the horse has also got a massive willy. <laughs> Naughty boy. <laughs> anyway, Cliff Thorburn's playing away. And uh, I think it was probably a few minutes later. I'd put my hands down my trousers. Not my trousers. I had none on. I was in bed. Put my hands down under the duvet sort of thing. And the end of my willy was glistening. <laughs> it had a sheen to it, a syrupy, a syrupy sheen, and I was over the fucking moon. <laughs> mm. I'm drinking my tea. Have a bit of your tea, you little bastard. I was absolutely over the moon. I remember thinking, that's right, I'm a comer. I am a comer. I am a comer. I remember thinking I was a comer. I thought I was a right little comer. Oh, you little comer. I'm a comer. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I come. <laughs> Imagine I announced it at school. I did. I should have done. I didn't. I'd love to have done. Oh, it's show and tell. What have you been doing over the weekend, Christopher? It's Chris to you, miss, and I'm a comer. 
<laughs> uh, what do you mean by that? Well, it was only yesterday, 8.45 exactly. I can tell you that because Cliff Thorburn uh, made 122 break. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I simply um, touched the end of my penis, uh, my glands, your glands, my glands. It's my glands. And it was glistening. Cheers, listening. Cheers for listening, listening. <laughs> anyway, I didn't do that. But I was so chuffed. I'm a comer. I'm a comer. And I remember thinking that was it. I was done now. I was a man. A few other things made me a man call. So I saw a labourer. He was like carrying bricks uh, to build something, some bit of something somewhere. And uh, I see him put his odd down. You know, he was odd, Gary. So he used to... Do you know what that is? No, you don't, you middle-class audience. It's like a broomstick with a weird half box on the end, a big, strong half box. And you can put, I think, one of them holds about 40 bricks. And they carry them up and down ladders, honestly. It's <laughs> unbelievable. And he put that down. He's all like, oh, that dirt all over him. I, I don't know how old he was, but he was a lot older than I was at the time. I was only about 10. And uh, he put that down. He picked up a whole litre of fruit juice it was just juice remember just juice i think it turned out to be just boiled peel but um that legally counted as juice he ripped it open with his teeth this whole liter do you know what i mean i was only used to the little umbongos that were like a tenth of one of them or probably less he's ripped the bit open with his mouth just tilted his head back long yeah then he started drinking some <laughs> see what i done there i made out that he was just going <laughs> he's drunk out this litre thing this litre carton and he's put it down he went <sighs> and honestly I thought what a man look at the man on that and I remember I sort of puff, puffed my chest out a little bit and I sort of done that squint and I'd seen Clint Eastwood do it I'd seen what's his name old bullet Steve McQueen do it and I thought, oh yes, he's doing it. And so I'd done it. Imagine, 10 years old, anemic, rings around my eyes. I've always had them. <laughs> and sort of just squint in my eyes. Oh yeah, chest out a bit. And when I got some pocket money for the first time ever, I think we got 50p a week. Can you imagine? I went out and bought a litre of juice, stood in the street, waited for some women to come past. And like two of them did together. I sort of struggled ripping it open with my mouth. Had about... A quarter of it and was sick. Not straight away, but I just sort of felt a bit dicky and just sort of went home and oh, oh, and then sort of done a little vomit. Second week of pocket money ever. Again, 50p. For some reason, this is a bit citric heavy. I went out and bought a pack of uh, mandarins. Isn't that real working class? You get pocket money, you buy food. <laughs> it is a treat. Go treat yourself. Fucking great. I'll eat. <laughs> Anyway, I bought a, like, a whole pack of mandarins or clementine satsumas. Fucking hell, what are all those? Clementine satsumas, mandarin, tangerine. Wouldn't know one from the other. Maybe I'd know clementines because they're a little bit more perfumed and tighter and rounder. But tangerine, mandarin, satsuma, no idea. Well, I know what they are, but not. I can't distinguish them. Why the fuck am I talking about that? Pocket money. Le oh, yeah, so that made me a man as well doing that with the orange juice so that and the comer was truly a man took me about another five years to do a full ejaculate and uh, shot myself in the eye <laughs> splattered myself in the eye that's sore isn't it fuck that bukkake Jesus Christ I got paranoid thinking it wasn't going to go down and when my parents come home they'll be like I know what that is, a spunk eye. <laughs> you know, I thought they were parents because they'd know. I, mean, I, I thought they'd probably had loads of sperm in each other. I don't mean to say that about my parents. But, you know, that's the sort of thing you think when you're a child, when you get sperm in your eye. They're going to go, what's happened to your eye? And go, nothing. I bumped it on a cock full of sperm. <laughs> but my mate lent me this VHS. It was all VHSs then, videos. Well, magazines as well, but no fucking pen drives that you can sneak around. You probably had to have it under your blazer and sort of, uh, and sort of run through. Anyway, it was glowing, this thing. I was so excited. I wanted to watch it, wanted to watch it, wanted to watch it. One day, mum, dad, brother, they've all gone out. Put it. They were videoing something. It was on timer, so I had to fucking wait for that to get over. It was, oh, come on. Slowest hour ever. I don't know what that video like. I did something, something like uh, Bergerac. Do you remember that John Nettles Bergerac? The things that went on on that island was it Guernsey? 
There was always things like Nazis pl- pl- planning to take over the world, <laughs> or like Satanist cults. It's insane. Anyway, they videoed something like that, and when it finally finished videoing, I took it out, put this thing in, and it was called uh, the Sex the Sex Clinic. I'm excited. This was, you know, 70s stuff. This was now early 80s, but it was made a few years before that, you could tell. Anyway, I'm just going mad, and every time I nearly do a comma, I go, no, stop it, oops. Put some cold water on it, dip it in the sink, stand on a milk crate, put your willy in the sink, lovely bit of cold water, go back in there, take a few breaths, back to it. Oh, 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 oh. And I can remember, uh, this way, this seemed to go on for hours, right? I was just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, and I'm laying on my back with a pillow under my head. Hi, hi, And it got the point, and I remember, I didn't intend to do a comma, but I couldn't stop, and it just went... And in slow motion, I just saw like about a zillion cc's of jizz flicking towards me like the infinity sign doing um, <laughs> twists. And it's come towards me, come towards me, and it went right in my eye. And I but I was over the moon. I was absolutely, if you can imagine how, uh, how happy I was just to do a, a little glistener, but to actually attack my own face with my love juice was something else, man. Incredible incredible time and that was it after that i thought you know the weapon is loaded uh you know and i'm not afraid to use it it was that kind of shit <laughs> but the whole thing although although a beautiful part of my upbringing it is somewhat clouded it's somewhat dirted by what happened the following morning because it was Saturday morning and the thing in Dartford on a Saturday morning was you went into town and walked around about a thousand times uh, looking for uh, people of the opposite sex or perhaps same sex and then just sort of go, <laughs> and, and that was it. But, you know, it was important to, to do it. It felt important. Anyway, everyone done it and then you at school go, yeah, I'll see you downtown on a Saturday and you'd go down the trading post and play arcade games and hang around with people who are a lot older than you and one girl gave me a love bite and I was like oh Christ but my mum didn't like it I was very young anyway so next morning I get up my brother's up me and my brother always hated each other he's just staring at me like I'm a cunt I'm ignoring him because he is a cunt and my mum and dad are there nah, nah, nah. and I've got my clothes on and I've, I remember trimming you know the holes in your knees of your jeans I trimmed them I trimmed the bits that were frayed to smarten them up a bit oh. <laughs> And there I was, and I was a bit goofy. I got called goofy at school for about a week, and then I took some nunchuckers in, and no one's meant. I didn't do anything with them. I got caught, and my mum and dad had to go out of school. Jesus, man. So, I've all got ready, and then suddenly my mum goes, Oh, Alan, uh, should we uh, should we watch that thing we videoed? And, and you see where this is going, can't you? Of course, he's, my, mum, my dad's put it on. And in those days, they're totally mechanical VHS video players. It's not like beep and little laser reader <laughs> or a computer. It's just like crash, crash. So it took the time it took my dad to walk back through the little room and sit down. So me, and my brother, mum, and dad were all sitting down, looking at the telly, tiny little room. What comes on is this big, curvaceous blonde woman in a white lingerie on her back with a doctor pounding her anus as hard as he looks like, as hard as he could. Maybe he had some more in him, who knows. Uh, he had a clipboard in his hand and a white lab coat on. He was a bit ugly and he had a bit of a shiny belly. And as he was banging her, he looked at camera. And by looked at camera, I mean looked at me, my mum, my dad and my brother. I'm only 14, 15. Yeah. And he's looked at camera and he's gone, mm, purely professional. <laughs> and I am looking at it. My brother's a gay, right? So it's not his. Not his. Um, it's mine, isn't it? And I am just going. <laughs> and, I, and my whole world's collapsing. I, you know, it, 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 it's not that I've done something wrong. Put up with that. Feels bad. Oh, I didn't mean to do something wrong. Or I didn't think or all that. But it's uh, their little boy was obviously sitting there last night cracking one out to some doctor <laughs> mm, purely professional <laughs> so they dealt with it i remember my old man give it to me and he went we don't want stuff like that in the house and my eyes automatically flicked to what we could call his stash <laughs> and he noticed and he gave me a look as if to say shut the fuck up and go out <laughs> oh it was dark man dark times
Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? What's your name? Out to the father of the missing 12 year old boy, Charlie. Uh, with me is his father, Charlie Bothell. Charlie, we're getting reports. That your son has been found in your basement, sir. Mr. Bothell, are you? Are what? You, yeah, we are getting reports that your son has been found alive in your basement. What? And sing a song. Sing a song. You were saying. Sing a song of righteousness. Learn the words. Learn the words. Here's some information. Here's some information. There's always a I'm canop- not sure I understand. You understand. There's a canopy of life. A can I'm not sure I understand. There's a canopy of life. Will you touch Michael's eye? I'm not sure I understand. Because we love time, love space, a different type of people, a different type of pie. Here's what I found on the web for a different type of people, a different type of pie. Woohoo! I mean, what would you rather have out of the two? Every time you had a bath, there was a spider swimming towards you or hmm your fingers are too long there are lots and lots of things to do do you remember Scarfgate? It wasn't that long ago, was it? Someone who's very, very special to me bought me a beautiful yes. scarf, very expensive, expensive cashmere scarf, scarf, and I fucking, and I lost, fucking it. lost it. And I was so and upset was so that upset I lost it. Lost and it. then uh, she bought me bought another me one, another an one, even nicer one, one. Beautiful one. scarf. It was so, so nice. So you know what happened? That was Scarfgate. Left it in the calf. Went in there. They said they had it. Someone had nicked it. Told me to fuck off. That's a short story. And well, what has happened? Of course, she turned up last night. A beautiful night. evening, went to a wonderful, wonderful restaurant that we always go to, a fantastic, fantastic one. one. And uh, she and bought me another scarf, and it's monogrammed. It says CSD in the corner, and it's so lovely. And it just, you know, you know, at a football match, if you ever go to football, sometimes you all hold your scarves up and wave them, and it looks amazing because everyone's doing it. And it's sort of almost like an optical illusion, like a sea, a sea of scarfage. And uh, you can do it with one on your own and go, hey. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. The accidental Ativan edition. I gotta go to bed, man. See you later. I'll see you much later.